Welcome to Building a Soul Winning Church. This is our Roundtable Masterclass and I love this topic because it really is the mandate of the Great Commission. So I want to start with Becky from Great. C3 San Diego. What does that look like for you and your church? Just give us a, a, a viewpoint. The mandate to yeah. win souls. Yes. It's We are all called to make disciples, to be ambassadors for Christ. and. Yeah. Um, that is something we take really seriously, obviously, at C3 San Diego. And we have built such a culture that people understand that it's not just for pastors, leaders, teachers, and evangelists mm -hmm. to save souls. We all are a part of the Great Commission. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. we spend a lot of our time on a weekly basis empowering our congregation, helping them understand that they are the ministers of reconciliation oh, and that yeah. God has made them sufficient ministers. Mm -hmm. And so they have what it takes to reach the people in their world. It's And so we really empower people. We're constantly it's in everything we do with our language who you bring in yeah. buy that friend yeah. a ticket oh, yeah. who's coming come along with come you on. so it's just like oh oh I, I okay I, I thought yeah. I was just gonna come by myself but yeah who am I gonna bring so every week we're just helping so them understand yeah. okay. they are a part of what we are doing here yeah. to save the city of San Diego yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. what about you Chris uh, yeah it's like I think it's I think we've just been through a big transition as a church because we've moved out of a building into uh, into a hotel, doing mm, the whole bump wow. in, bump out type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but for us, that became really f sort of central mm. uh, to the whole move, you know, just try to say, hey, look, you know, because I think, I think churches can sometimes, we can become so focused about our building and our, yeah. yes. you know, our, yeah. you know the, the vision offerings are about the next yeah. development and all right. that sort of stuff. So it's been really healthy for us because it forced mm. us to think, you know, it, it, I felt like God took us on a journey of going on mission. You know, yeah. and we're suddenly going back into the heart of the yeah. city, yeah. and Beautiful. it's been it's been awesome. one of the most just amazing few months because you can sort of see as we've sort of re sort of reinvigorated people's mm. yeah. thinking yeah. about yeah. actually yeah. making their own mark in their own in their own world and inviting people and yeah. all this sort of stuff, and then wow. just being in the heart of a city yeah. as well. We went from being a very isolated kind of mm. on the outskirts of the city centre, yeah. where the only passage passing traffic on a Sunday morning was people come to church, yeah. right. to suddenly being in the city centre yeah. where. When, so you're when quite visible now. Yeah, when church oh. is opening, people are going Which for coffee, going for yeah. breakfast. You know, it's like, yeah. it's kind of people are obviously going shopping, yeah. and there's yeah. our guys out with the boards, and yeah. Yeah. we have these big red fingers, you know, that so are waving around, and, yeah. and it's like, it's just suddenly, essential. we're back on mission. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And it's put the whole thing yeah. right back at the very center, which wow. is, which is, it's, if it's not in the center of who we yeah. are as a church, right. it's like, what are we yeah. existing for? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, uh, that's right. Yeah. And so Samuel, you're itinerant, um, mm -hmm. so how does that look like for you? You know, when you're going to these different churches, do you sense, you know, when you walk into a church, what the culture of that church is in terms of soul winning? Can you feel that? Yeah, you know, I think I think it's like any, any of our churches. I think if you're a church that's a soul winning church, usually there's a sense of something fresh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so if there's young words, people, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Wow. If there's young people, yep. that's usually a good yeah. sign, a yeah. good yeah. indicator yeah. that you're doing something that there's a because if if you're a soul winning church, usually there's vision, right? There's mm -hmm. a forward thinking, what's next? Yeah. How do we keep mm -hmm. thinking long term? Because wow. otherwise so if we right. If we don't have vision, we're we're just happy kind of babysitting the current congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, vision is going to take me to to keep reaching forward and keep mm -hmm. reaching the next generation. So I think um, I think usually uh, you know in a, a congregation, if if a service experience mm -hmm. um, never references new people in the room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Sometimes you go yeah. and it's like we're all having a family conversation, but it's all a bunch of inside jokes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. That it's it's surprising how easy it is to do that yeah. right. from the stage. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone's yeah. just talking like everybody knows each other. Yeah. And if you're talking that way, that means you're not expecting anybody wow. new to be yeah. in that room. Yeah. Wow. So you're kind of subtly kind of setting that 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 like stage actually yeah. Yeah. to let people in the room know that yeah. this isn't really a place where we're expecting new people yeah. to even yeah. be exactly. here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you you'll, you can see that pretty much right away in the atmosphere and the attitude yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're also based in San Diego, and I yeah. remember you um, had mentioned to me that at the end of your prayer time, you always pray for yeah. the city. So that keeps the, yes. the fire yeah. there, isn't it? The focus for the city. Yeah, well, and always. that's one of the things when I first started coming mm -hmm. to C3 Church in, in San Diego. 
That was one of the first things I noticed. Uh, it's just a, it's a small part of the service, yeah. but at the end of worship, we have time of prayer, right? Praying over needs, praying for miracles, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of a deal. But then in every single right. part of that prayer, we, we do a few things. We pray for needs and yeah. pray for miracles. We actually call it the book of miracles because wow. it's literally like a, a folder kind mm -hmm. of book that wow. we put the miracles in or yeah. the prayer requests in. We call it the book of miracles because... Mm -hmm prayer requests go in and yeah. miracles come out That's kind of a deal. Right. <laughs> but So we pray over that, yeah. but then we always pray for our pastors. Mm -hmm. You know, pray for favor over them, blessing so over them, them, God's hand on them. But then we always pray for our city, right? right? I always pray. Right. And it's a subtle thing, but it's like it shifts the attention yeah. mm -hmm. of we your congregation. Yeah, to go, yeah. hey, to so when I'm praying, say, city. God, give us San Diego. God, yes. give us this region. This yeah. this city belongs. You love these people, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's a, it's a short time frame. Mm. But I, again, it's a vision thing, right? Mm. It it's like too. a subtle way that every single week with, yeah. with our, our people, we're able to remind them. We're not just here as a glee club yeah. to sing some songs once <laughs> yeah, a week. Exactly. Like we are on mission. We got a city to reach, and we're gonna pray for it, right? Yeah. So, I I think that that element again kind of goes back to what you know Becky was saying about just it's in the vocabulary, it's mm -hmm. in our language, yeah. it's how we are constantly yeah. reinforcing. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That soul winning passion yeah. for yeah. our city. Yeah. So let's move from San Diego to. Africa. Yeah, oh, come, on. Yeah, yeah, so, come yeah. on. So, Rock, how does that look like in, in Africa, you know, where I guess people would, some of them would be quite hostile to Christianity. Uh, how does that look like for you and your church? Uh, it depends to where you live in yeah. Africa. Mm. There are parts that are hostile, mm. and there are those parts of Africa that have been, like, evangelized. Yeah. I come from Uganda, and Uganda is, like, 75 percent christian mm. Oh, mm. so so definitely yeah. Yeah. it's not like the west that mm. people like back off when yeah. you're preaching mm. the gospel i'm talking about a country where you have open air loud music mm. everywhere crusade i'm yeah. talking about a city where preachers stand on every corner wow. shouting wow. to anyone wow. oh, you're amazing. going to a bank someone is speaking and yeah. preaching so it's open to mm -hmm. the gospel. Yeah. So it's actually what we are trying to do for us mm -hmm. is to try to look for better ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's been, it's been done. Something wow. has been okay. happening. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is it effective? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. So most of the evangelism happens outside the church, outside yeah. the four walls. It's right. yeah. go out and awesome. seek them. Uh, the service thing, bring them to the service and make them saved, mm. is is a new mm. is a new yeah. thing. Okay. So for us, like what we are doing as C3 Alive, like in the Western locations, I think our main thing is make, making sure people belong okay. mm. to to church, yeah. Yeah. making yeah. it more simple, mm. making it more relevant. Yeah. Like the people have this religious mindset of mm -hmm. uh, we know what they're mm -hmm. saying, we know yeah. what they want yeah. to provide, and we've been to church every time. Mm. And uh, any, any every time the church wants to come out, they come out with like a crusade, like mm. right. speaking yes. on microphones and let the sick come, let people come to Jesus. Mm. So we are trying to cut that down, make yeah. it a little funky yeah. mm -hmm. for the next generation. Yeah. Wow, great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Africa people respond easily. Yeah. Why not bring a screen, put it in a park, and you're like, uh, we are watching Manchester United and Arsenal, <laughs> which everyone loves. And, yeah. and we don't even preach at that time. Yeah. But people are like, what? So you're taking new that. avenues yeah. because Thank you need to reach a new generation. You, you can't just do much. everything exactly. the old yeah. way you've it's always amazing. done it. You have to be yeah. open to new ideas. Because it's an people. interesting phenomenon. Like, because we've got a team in Ghana, so we've got a church, a lo one of our locations is there, and and I've been across a few times to sort of do the big weekends, and mm. you get the people coming in. But you can you, to get people in church. Um, and, I, and I don't think this is just Africa. I think there's other parts of the world where there's that reception to the gospel, but they're like, yeah, I'm great. I'll put my hand up. But you're not actually winning the soul. Yeah. You know, you just, almost mm. people just, yeah, just it's response. almost a religious response, isn't yeah. it? Well, that's, that's the right. It's like, oh, yeah, I need to put my hand yeah. up because the pastor mm. has yeah. said I need to do yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and so it's, and so actually I think there's a, mm. the, for us has been a big journey of thinking it's not just getting those hands up, but then yeah. also yeah. what happens next. Yes. Totally. Well, that's making disciples. That's, that's, that's the yeah. actual yeah. calling. Yeah. So we need disciples. And actually for us, what we do for instance, we have this massive soccer tournament. We call it 
their live soccer tournament. Yeah. And mm -hmm. thank God for our name, C3 is, <laughs> no one will even think it's a church. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Yeah. So we, we make all these jazzes and we yeah. put on C3 and <laughs> even the Muslims want to put them on. So it's like, yeah. that's C3, yeah. we like those people. Yeah. Yeah. They are yeah. good people and yeah. it's, yeah. It's a good way we are getting yeah. Muslims saved. Mm. Wow. Awesome. Wow. Which, is, yeah. which is really great. Yeah. And in the areas where it's too closed, mm. like Northern Africa, definitely the best way to reach out to them is not to be on the forefront. Like yeah. you're carrying your Bible, I'm yes. a preacher. It's mm. not to do that. Yeah. It's getting in uh, as a professional. Mm -hmm. right. doing something yeah. different yeah. Right. Yeah. and then slow by slowly by slowly start making life doing life with people yeah. mm -hmm. and Great. and and in the background yeah. you start yeah. lowering them and winning them yeah, yeah. So yeah. and that really is this culture of c3 isn't it that relational mm -hmm. yeah. aspect as yeah. well yeah. so jason so talk to us about you know with your church Obviously, you know, you get people saved, but how do yeah. you keep that back door closed? Yeah. So, you know, they get saved, <laughs> not just turned out. Come on. Really not a question. Yeah. 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 Give us some yeah. practical, maybe yeah. systems or process or methodology cool. that, that works for you guys. Right. And I think we're all yeah. always on that journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, exactly. And we know someone has a moment with Jesus, but that's very different to mm -hmm. living a life yes. with Jesus. Yeah. Wow. wow. So transitioning them is, like we said, is, is discipleship. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, discipleship is all about relationship, so yeah. that that's yeah. got to be the critical component. Yeah, in, yeah. In mm -hmm. totally establishing or utilizing the relationships that mm -hmm. that they have. Yep. And so I think if we're if we're going to take people through that process, then then the first step is we need to know who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So being intentional right. Right. Yeah. about do we have details? If we, if we haven't, then we can't follow up and establish so a relationship. Right. Yeah. So, 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 it's so simple, isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, and so and it's going to look different in all of yeah. our yeah. contexts, mm -hmm. how that works best. But to think about yeah. what is the best way where we can do that, where it's not freaky mm. and yeah. you're yeah. not being weirdos yeah. just trying to get people's yeah, details. Be yeah. 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 There's got to be a clarity, right? Like if, if someone the next step. is coming to Christ, but they don't know what to do now. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like if yeah, they leave yeah. the yeah. service, yeah. even having raised their hand or yeah. even come forward or whatever the setting is, yeah, totally. if they give their life to Christ and have no clear yeah. next yeah. step, yeah. then we've, no. we've missed exactly. that. Exactly. And yeah. we've sometimes inoculated yeah. them against real Christianity. Because mm. if right. they think putting their hand up is like it's an injection that makes yeah, me yeah, good, yeah. 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 and now I'm sorted for the rest yeah. of my life, yeah. then when things aren't, yeah. good in the way yeah. they think they should be yeah. they go that jesus thing didn't work yeah because mm. yeah. so, that really is the first step isn't it yeah on their journey yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so obviously being clear with our message yeah. and how we do our salvation calls mm -hmm. can yeah. get very yeah. different response yeah. yeah uh that's a whole different yeah. deal there um so firstly yeah the contact details yeah. is yep. essential and then it's who's responsible mm. for, for them that following person. up yeah. and again right. depending on the size of your right. context, uh, we would like to obviously link them to someone right. similar age mm -hmm. and gender. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But then that person is responsible. And yeah. so there has to be a, a clear point of responsibility, yeah. otherwise wow. it can yeah. just awesome. not end yeah. up happening. How do you keep that person accountable lost. then? So for us, it's all mechanized through Alvanto, through the, okay. the database yep. that we use, um, where it sets up a people flow. Uh, and then it, yeah, so it's clear mm -hmm. if that's yeah. been. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, pathways yeah. courses. So the next step is you get saved, you go through the pathways, you get yeah. in a connect group. Yeah. But before, I just feel like backtracking a little bit because we're we're kind of talking about you know what we do with them once they're saved. But I think yeah. people are having a hard time getting people yes. in the church yeah, to get yes, them yeah. saved. Yes. <laughs> and and I think that's where a lot of times you know when, when yeah. I um, whether it's either San Diego or I'm at another church ministering. I'm uh, when you see the new hands go up, like who's new today, and you, yeah. and you don't really see a hand. I'm like, yeah. okay, so that tells me something. So if, this might sound funny initially, but if people aren't getting saved, you're not really being a soul winning church, but you're not in a soul winning church because you're not bringing the unchurched into the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how can we get unchurched people into the church? I think that's like a really good question yeah. Yeah. to talk yeah. about. And why yeah. are they yeah. not coming into the church? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's yeah. like, I, I'm all for the marketing. We need mm. signage. Can people find you? Yeah. Like right. there are simple basic, yeah. simple yeah. things yeah. you have Absolutely. to do. Yeah. And then like we've talked about, te uh, equipping your congregation that they are rent, uh, ministers of reconciliation. Mm. Do they have invitation cards? Yeah. Everywhere you go, you should be handing out invitation cards. Yeah. So yeah. all of those marketing type things. Mm. But I think all of our best marketing tool is our people. Beautiful. And yeah. our people Absolutely. need to be bringing people mm. into the house of God. Right. Yeah. If they are not bringing their friends into the house, 
house of God, yep. we have to be yeah. a, ask ourselves yeah. why. Are there is it what is the reason they're not wanting to? Are for are, sure. are its church uh, a, a cringeworthy mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. people? So right. I think yeah. we have to mm-hmm. look at our churches and go, why don't our people? want to bring their friends. Yeah. Yeah. What is so stopping important. them from yeah. bringing their friends yeah. into yeah. our yeah. congregations? Yeah. And that's the question. You know, and I think one of one of the things that um, we were talking about you know, even before this conversation, the conversation before the conversation mm-hmm. about cringe is that the cringe, you know, many, many times churches identify tr- try to put the Holy Spirit in the box of yeah. the cringe factor in church. Yeah. Well, okay, we, we don't want to do that Holy Spirit thing. We don't want to do that power thing. We don't want to, you know, people get yeah. confused. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to hide that. Wow. Like, that's a cringe. But that's not what we're talking about. Mm-mm. You know, the cr- we, we need the Holy Spirit. We yes, need the power absolutely. of God. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, yes. that, that is what empowers our people mm-hmm. to True. actually reach people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. If they're not filled with the Holy Spirit, Acts one eight, then they can't really effectively be, be effective. witness, mm-hmm. right? But it's in it's the the other service experiences yeah. and elements and yeah. you know, from the parking lot all the yes. way yeah. mm. to the pulpit to the kids' yeah. experience. Yeah. Every where in between. Yeah. And, and I think it's services. good to get people like, because you, we get so familiar. You're like, oh, I'm used to seeing that disgusting carpet or I'm mm. used to seeing yeah. Yeah. the yeah. hodgepodge yeah. kids check in. doesn't stress me out, but it stresses out a new mom. Mm. Yeah. Like, so right. it's like having an unbiased person. I think it'd be helpful to yeah. go through For all the sure. steps, like exactly. acting yeah. like a new person is, do I know where to park? Yeah. Is it clear mm. where I check in my kids? Is it mm. a friendly process? Do I feel safe? Do I mm. feel comfortable? Or right. all the kids, yeah. people yeah. looking angry and mean, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> is it too dark, too light? Right, too yeah. loud, you know, and we're not here to, you know, please everybody. Mm-hmm. But I think we owe it to ourselves to go, would I actually yeah. want to go yeah. to my church mm-hmm. if I didn't mm-hmm. pastor it? Yeah. Yeah. We have to ask ourselves yeah. that question. Yeah. Yeah. Probably you know? worth mystery shopping your own church. It's yes. a secret wow. shopper. Yeah. Yeah. Actually yeah. ask yeah. someone to come to your church. I think it's yeah. a really good idea, actually. We've done it before mm-hmm. in the past of saying, you know, yeah. it's a great way actually to get a an unchurched yeah. person into church as well. Yeah. You know, if you're a friend and say, yeah. hey, would you come to my church yeah. and experience yeah. it and tell me everything that was you enjoyed yeah. and yeah. everything you struggled with. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it's but, but, but I, I mean, I went on, I was on holiday a few years back, went to a friend's church um, who I knew, but it, the process of turning up into a strange place and, yeah. Yeah. and thankfully they did yeah. have greeters and yeah. great kids team but like uh, like it was uh, it suddenly dawned on me it'd yeah. been the first yeah. time yeah. Fresh exactly. yeah, the first time in years that I'd actually turned up to church that wasn't my church yeah. Yeah. And, and it was like oh my gosh this is a big deal for yeah. people yeah. right and, and, yeah. for and actually yeah. um, I went to San Diego and I was mm. asking Jürgen like how do you make people come to church? Mm. <laughs> I'm really, I really, I really, I really want Arm to see twist. people come. Yeah. Yeah. And then he gave me the story of one church that he visited. 